guys, it's Morgan, and today I'm going to be talking about Episode 1 of Season 2 of Scream Queens that premiered last night. Now, if you haven't seen Episode 1 of Season 2 of Scream Queens and you don't want to be spoiled, stop watching the video now, watch the episode, and then come back. I also have reviews on all the episodes of Season 1 of Scream Queens, so if you want to see those, they're on my channel. Again, if you haven't seen Season 1 and don't want to be spoiled, then don't watch them. But if you don't care, watch them. So here's my review of Episode 1 of Season 2 of Scream Queens. We start off in a flashback on October 31st, 1985, where a woman, who's concerned about her husband, interrupt Nurse Thomas, played by Laura Bell Bundy, and Dr. Mike, played by Jerry O'Connell. After the woman leaves, Nurse Thomas and Dr. Mike throw the husband's body in the swamp, and they also cover it with Dr. Mike's costume. While they're doing that, Nurse Thomas mentions stories that she used to hear about a creature that lurks the swamp called the Green Meanie. It is then revealed that the woman is pregnant. When I saw that, I was thinking, oh, another baby. In 2016, Dr. Brock Holt, played by John Stamos, and Dr. Cassidy Cascade, played by Taylor Lautner, are helping a patient, Catherine Hobart, played by Cicely Strong, who has werewolf syndrome and was recommended to the hospital by Dean Kathy Munch, played by Jamie Lee Curtis, who now owns a hospital. It's revealed that the Chanel's, played by Emma Roberts, Billy Lord, and Abigail Breslin, have been released from the asylum after Hester, played by Leah Michelle, confesses to Denise, played by Niecy Nash, that she was the one who was behind the murders in season one. But Hester says that you can't be on trial for the same crime twice. But Denise tells her that Hester wasn't even on trial once, the Chanel's were, and Hester is arrested. Dean Munch talks to Zayde, played by Kiki Palmer, and asks her to come work at her hospital, and Zayde accepts. Zayde meets Dr. Brock Holt and Dr. Cassidy Cascade and learns that Dr. Holt has a hand transplant because of a Super Bowl party incident where he put his hand down the sink and the garbage disposal turned on, which made him lose his hand. She also realizes that Dr. Cascade feels like a block of ice, but he dismisses it. Dr. Cassidy Cascade, Dr. Brock Holt, and Zayde are talking to Catherine about her condition, and Chamberlain Jackson, played by James Earl, shows up to help cheer Catherine up. Catherine wants to leave, but Zayde tells her that they will be able to help her. Zayde goes to Dean Munch and tells her that they need more ladies in the hospital, and Dean Munch tells her that she knows what they're going to do. Even though the Chanel's are free, they are hated by America. After graduating college, Chanel No. 5 got a job at a dentist office, Chanel No. 3 got a job at a sperm bank, and Chanel got a job at a blood bank. While complaining about their current lives, Dean Munch shows up and tells them that she wants them to go to medical school and work at her hospital. Zayde is doing laundry and then hears something. It's the Chanel's. And at first, she seems pretty shocked to see them, but then tells them that it's great to see them. I thought that scene was pretty funny because you could tell that she looked like she was terrified when she saw them, but then was happy about it kind of funny how her feelings seem to change very quickly. Dean Munch brings the Chanel's and Zayde into the locker room, and there the Chanel see Dr. Brock Holt, and it's pretty clear that Chanel is interested in him. Dean Munch tells the Chanel's that she wants them to follow the doctors and not say anything. Zayde, the Chanel's, Dr. Cassidy Cascade, and Dr. Brock Holt are talking to Catherine about her condition, and the Chanel's end up insulting Catherine. The Chanel's meet nurse Ingrid Marie Hoffel, played by Kirstie Alley, and she tells them that she doesn't know why Dean Munch brought them to the hospital, and also tells Chanel that she doesn't like her. The Chanel's are called into Dean Munch's office, and Zayde is there too. They are put on academic probation because of what they said to Catherine, and when Chanel asks if they'll still be getting their salaries, Dean Munch tells them that they were never getting salaries. And yeah, they didn't react very well to that. Chanel tells Chanel number no. 3 and Chanel number no. 5 that they can become medical and health reporters for TV, and in order to do that, they have to get back into Dean Munch's good graces, and in order to do that, they have to find a cure for Catherine's condition before Zayde does. Chanel finds Dr. Brock Holt, who's also trying to find a cure for Catherine, and they flirt a little bit, and then figure out an idea, and interrupt Catherine's surgery before it starts, and tell her that she has to go on a diet in order to lose her hair. Chanel gets Dr. Brockholt to say that their idea was better than Zayde's idea, and Zayde is very clearly upset about it. The Chanel's check in on Catherine and find out that Chanel's idea caused Catherine to lose all of her hair, so they give her a makeover, and she tells them that they changed her life, and Dean Munch tells them that they made the hospital proud. Nurse Ingrid tells the Chanel's that just because they solved one case doesn't make them doctors, 
and she also tells them that she has their number. Dean Munch tells Nurse Ingrid that she has plans for the Chanel's, and after Dean Munch walks away, Nurse Ingrid says that she does too. Chanel has a date with Dr. Brock Holt, and Chanel number three has a date with Dr. Cassidy Cascade. So Chanel number five has to give Catherine a hydrotherapy bath. She locks them both into their baths and reassures Catherine that Chamberlain Jackson will get them in an hour. Then, someone dressed as the green meanie comes into the room and kills Catherine. And also seems to kill Chanel number five. Okay, so I don't think Chanel number five is actually dead. I mean, I've seen pictures and Snapchat stories of Abigail Breslin on the set, so I'm pretty sure she's okay. At least for now. In the promo for episode two, we see that Chad is back, which should be very enjoyable. And I also hope that we see more of Hester in episode two. I can't wait to find out her storyline. Let me know in the comments what you thought about episode one of season two of Scream Queens.